Okay. Ooh. Right, trying a new setup again. I hope the glare is not too bad. But oh well. Um, so before we start, uh, if you're looking for some updates on heavy paint, the past week I've been working on a few things. Uh, one of them is the demo. So now when you when you open up heavy paint for the first time, you'll get uh, a little auto demo sort of like this and it starts reading out stuff and the idea is to just give you a little guide through all the tools I mean just show, show you the basics of where the buttons and stuff are I mean uh, yeah I I feel like the interface is simple but I, I uh, also get a lot of comments of from people that are like this is weird and strange and I don't I don't get it and this is dumb, so I figure I'm going to try to make it more clear for uh, beginners especially. So that's the idea. Um, I hope that'll, you know, not be too freaky. It sort of looks like a Ouija board, I realize. It looks kind of creepy, like a, there's a ghost controlling your your program, but... We'll see. It's a test. We'll see what people think, and if it's good, I'll leave it in. And if it's bad, I'll take it, take it out. Um, okay, so today I'm just gonna do this little. Um, man, the glare is bad, actually. Where the heck is the glare coming from? Oh, it's from the kitchen. Shoot. Uh, well. I'm going to try to do this little clay pot over there in the background. I noticed some problems with uh, the, the eyedropper sometimes gets stuck. So I'm trying to hunt down that bug and maybe if it, if it appears today that'll be good so I can set kind of like a Sasquatch I'm trying to find these bugs sometimes. Wow, this glare is pretty severe, huh? Hmm. I wonder if I can get a better angle somehow. Maybe if it was lower. Oh, that's a little bit better. But then you can't really see the the pot so well. I should probably wipe it down. So it's not Gross. Move this out of the way. Okay. Maybe more brightness. Is that better? Whatever, good enough. Let's see. So I'm going to use Phil Lasso for most of the stuff in here. I use this tool for blocking and stuff. It's really quick. You can change the texture here. To make it solid. It's kind of bluish on the sides coming in. But I want everything basically to be filled with some sort of a color. A uh, really like generic, basic version of the color that's supposed to be there. Because it's really hard to uh, judge what what colors. If your color, it's hard to judge if your colors are right unless you have a bunch of colors around it. So the goal in the beginning is just to throw as much colors on there as possible e even if they're not completely right just so 
we have something to judge against. Okay. Uh, okay. So now I can see that this is way too dark. This middle brownish. So I'll go up. And what else? I think. I think like this area around here is a little bit darker. pretty slight but just a tiny bit darker and then this area over here now to me it feels more blue bluish or instead of more blue I, sh I should say less red so I can pick this color that's over here and to make it less red we have a few options we can we can go side like to change the hue or if we go up that's less saturation which technically means less red so maybe I'll go up a little bit and make it less saturated and hopefully that'll make it feel more blue or make it feel like it matches a, bit, a little bit better. I want the value to stay sort of similar, maybe even darker. Mm. Okay. So this color underneath the highlight, what is that? It's like the highlight, but just darker and more greenish, maybe. Yeah. I feel like it's too bright. Or, or maybe this shadow is too dark. Okay, now that... See, so as we keep adding in more colors, we're able to judge them against each other and sort of compare it's easier to compare when you have something next to it basically okay um, this whole area underneath isn't too dark I think We have like these really pretty bright highlights on the the lip, the rim. Hey, okay, so far nothing's broken yet. That's good. It's exciting. Uh, oh, hi Toto. Hello, Neg Negni. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Um, timer. Actually, that's a good point. Maybe we should bring in the timer. The timer got a, a few little updates, too. I'll show you. So, if we add the timer back in. Uh, if I bring the time down to, like, 1 minute 30 and start. Check out what's going to happen at 1 minute. We'll have a little extra surprise here. I need to make sure my iPad is ready for this. Oh, there we go. One minute. lapel is oh, sorry switch to a lapel mic now it's kind of far away I should get a extension <laughs> okay so uh, maybe I'll try to add in a a few more intermediate colors 
in between these chunks that I feel like are really, really drastic changes here. So that when we start blending, it'll be less. Ah, okay, time's up. Whatever. But anyway, yeah, it shows you when there's a minute left, which I think is kind of nice. So I'll go back to like five minutes. Yeah, let's tr let's try five minutes on this. Let's see what blending would look like on here. If we go here, I'll use draw. Pretty big brush. Bunch of noise. The noise is basically how many bristles you would see in this brush. The more noisy it is, the more finer bristles there are. Dryness is sort of like, uh, well, less dry is more wet, so it's going to be a little bit smoother. More dry will, will like leave parts behind, so it's like dry brush. Oops. I don't know if I like this smudging. I'm trying to make it follow the rotation of the pot. Like, there's little groove lines on it where they were spinning the pot, so maybe it makes sense to have these lines. Like following that. But now it looks like it's spinning or blurring or something weird. Hello Ellie, welcome. Welcome to the live stream. Um, you should add a bomb sound? No man, I'm trying to stay relaxed. I don't want to have a heart attack every time. Even the beep already gives me a, a mini heart attack. Um, let's see. Try smudging this side. Sometimes less noise actually looks better. Less noise and high dryness will make it look more sort of rough and uh, grungy okay I, I want to add a little bit of a shadow to the bottom too otherwise it looks like it's floating in midair added a little change to the way the rotation works now so before this little indicator used to show up over here which is a little annoying if, it, if your finger is blocking it you know especially for finger uh, users so it now it shows up in the middle and then also before it used to like have a limit to how far you would go and it would stop but now you can just keep going forever and, and it'll keep rolling so I think this this uh, 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 rotation will work a lot better so let's say I want to chisel that way that's fine and then I want to chisel the other way Oh, fuck. Okay, one minute left. Um, these are like, these are more red, I think. And then also this this line right here where the light meets the shadow you see how at the very top of it it's um, very sharp 
but then as we go down it, be, it should become more and more um, softer so let's try to do that with I'm using fill with smudge to try to smudge it towards the bottom I don't know if you can see that so I want to make sure oh shit I want to make sure that the uh, top is still really pointy and sharp so I'll just add add back the the sharpness up there maybe try one more time with the smudge whatever I think that's good enough oh man oh sh I really don't like this edge over here looks weird. But so far no problems with eyedropper. It was something to do with like mixer plus eyedropper was doing weird stuff. But it seems to be behaving okay for now. So yeah, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think about this demo thing? I'm gonna show it one more time for anyone who wasn't here in the beginning, but when you first start heavy paint, you will now see a demo that looks like this. And it's gonna say like, oh, welcome to heavy paint. These are your tools. And then it highlights all the different tools that you get. And let me bring this up a little bit. And it's supposed to be like a quick guide on how to use everything, because I notice a lot of a lot of reviews. I, I get I get a lot of one star review reviews sometimes from people who are like, "What the hell is this interface? I don't get it, and it doesn't make any sense." And then they they they're like, "One star, you suck." So I'm hoping that having this little um, demo will will help alleviate that problem. And I also noticed that there's a lot of downloads and people uninstall like right after they first download which is a little bit sad so I don't know we'll see how it goes I, I hope this helps um, but yeah it, I, I do realize it's a little bit creepy how it, it like moves the sliders and does the stuff like this or I don't know is that creepy what do you guys think I haven't seen that so much in programs. I wonder why why they don't do that. I've seen a lot of guides where they they'll like have a little pop-up window that says, "Hey, this over here does this." And then another pop-up over here that's like, "This thing does this," which I guess makes sense. Maybe I should have pop-ups. But I figure since the, the status is already down there, I I sort of want to also teach people that the status exists because I think a lot of new users they they open it up they're pressing all the buttons they don't realize that like the status actually tells you what every tool does so they're like what the hell's going on and but you, you just have to look down a little bit and I'm hoping that this will teach them to look down at the status bar I think pop-ups are better yeah maybe it should be a pop-up I'm trying to like highlight so it'll it'll highlight stuff but yeah, maybe it should be a pop-up pen pressure on iPad uh, no I'm I'm kind of waiting for that I I don't really have the ability to add pen pressure it's um, part of the engine I'm using it's called Godot engine so if you look up Godot engine on github dot com and do a search for iOS pen pressure if you if you put like a like or you know subscribe to 
whatever that iOS pen pressure issue is on, on GitHub. That'll help the uh, developers of, of Godot to um, know that people want to use pen pressure on iOS. I've already like uh, asked for it, but it's, it's a little bit tough because the engine, they have a lot of work to do. So the more people that um, pile on that issue, the more, more they'll probably put priority on it. Uh, do 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 What stand do I use for iPad? I'm using um actually uh, just a regular old easel. I don't know if you can see this. It's a metal painting easel. Otherwise, I'm just painting on the on the floor usually. <laughs> um. I think you only need to use it once, so maybe showing it each time you open it. No, 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 it doesn't show it each time you open it. it. It only shows the first time you open it, and then the second time it won't show. Um, but yeah, that, that would be really annoying if it was showing every single time. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, this pot is a little bit boring. <laughs> I want to kind of want to paint something else. Maybe... Uh, Jeez, I need to find something. I know, a nice white cup, even more boring. Okay, uh, try that. A little bit. Sorry, I'm still figuring out this setup. It's a little clunky. this is okay so I'm gonna set up the timer again you just click down here five minutes for this cup I guess okay and my hands gonna be blocking everything I should probably try to do this the other way next time okay I'm gonna use fill again. I, I use fill for everything, basically. Yeah, I am blocking everything with my hand. Oh, shit. I'll try to stay out. Or maybe I can put this down here. Put this up here. There we go. Okay, these colors feel very off. Somewhere in the middle. But then it's not so yellow. It's pretty bluish over there too. Right, something like that. Okay, the shape is pretty wrong also. Here, I can try using um, auto pick color. So if you press E twice, you get auto pick color. And what this does is you, whatever color you click on, it will auto pick that color. You can draw. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. Um, this goes here. A little bit brighter. It's kind of greenish inside, is it? Maybe not. Maybe I'm just imagining that.
Maybe this is a little bit darker. It's funny, I'm like catching myself looking at the screen instead of looking at the actual cup that's in front of me. I, I don't know why I'm doing that. Maybe I paint from photos too much. I'm probably running out of time right now. One minute thirty. Okay, brighter for the lip. Actually, not that bright. It is kind of green in there. I'm not imagining it. Oh shit. That's one minute left. I don't know if you guys are painting along today. But, uh, Damn it. I guess I should do whatever smudging I'm, I w would want to do at this point before time runs out. Oh no, 10 seconds. Ah, that was too fast. I'm going to end up cheating again. Oh, the smudging actually looks really bad <laughs> in this case. I should... I don't know. I, I don't think it's worth it for these. They're too boring for smudge. I'm not sure. Not sure about these. Ooh, God. Mm. Okay. The current iOS doesn't have the timer. Nope. It will though in a minute. I think uh, I'm pretty close to finishing up this version. Um, it'll have the demo and the timer and everything. And it fixes some, some bugs. Um, so that should be hopefully in the next couple days. I just need to test, test a little bit more. But so far, so good. There's no horrible problems yet. Let me try resizing just in case. Resizing tends to cause a lot of problems sometimes, but it's working okay. Let's see, resizing, eyedropper, tons of problems. Fill poly, tons of problems. It's because these are like sort of one-off tools and they there's a lot of like specific rules that only apply to these tools, so there's high chance of them being buggy, whereas everything else sort of just uses the same code. Where is it? Fill poly. So in case you guys haven't seen the new fill poly, it's a little different too. But basically with this tool, you, you, you can click to create a polygon shape. And at the same time, you can draw. And then you 
press there to finish the poly. So again, it's like you can draw and also click to make uh, sharp and, and curved shapes at the same time. And uh, this also works with textures. So you can try it with textures. It's kind of strange, but interesting, I think. And it, um, it works with smudge tool too. So you can go like this, start smudging. Actually with these fill poly things, it's probably better, you can do blur. So if you bring this slider on smudge all the way down to the left, it becomes a blur and turns green. It says blur mode. So this one, now it gives you a blur like that, which you can control the size of the blurriness up here. Oh shit. Like that. You can do pretty subtle blurs too. I like it better with fill lasso actually. Um, so blur. can change the, the size of the blur noise right here. Um, yeah, I hate this painting, so I'm just ruining it. <laughs> Do you have test flight for iOS? No, I don't have test flight. I used to, but I, I turned it off because it was uh, causing a lot of problems. Do, 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 do. It the issue with test flight is that um, with iOS, when you let's say you're using test flight and you want to switch to the the regular build or the official one, I think it un it uninstalls the app in order to get the regular build, which is a big problem because uh, whenever um, iOS uninstalls an app, it deletes all the data associated with it, including all the paintings and everything. And there's not really anything you can do to uh, avoid that from the app side. So I'd rather just not have people losing all of their paintings because <laughs> that, that's definitely not cool for the, uh, I mean, it sucks. I, I wish they didn't do that. Um, Hello, Manu. Okay. But yeah, I wish there was an easier way to uh, test stuff out on iOS. I mean, the closest thing I've got is um, the, des the desktop versions are published like pretty much every day. So if you want to try out the, the latest stuff, just grab the desktop one. I, I think I exported it like an hour ago and um, it's much easier to you know catch bugs and fix things on the desktop one versus the mobile versions because the mobile versions you have to like you know submit it and it takes you know a couple days maybe for them to review it and it's just a huge pain to publish for the mobile ones compared to the desktop so I try to do all my like testing on the desktop version okay this painting is let me try split screen too this is another thing that tends to break sometimes the split screen so I gotta make sure this works this is Michelle's Pinterest so there's lots of uh, mochi cake on there or maybe I can go to uh, Instagram oh wait no you can't you can't do split screen with Instagram never mind um, hmm Roly could try Roly study okay Try this one. New page. Let's do square canvas. Okay. 
All right, let's put the timer on. Here's seven minutes. We're gonna try RGB. Good old RGB. down here okay. and then so the water is like uh, it's either reflecting the sky or reflecting the mountain so it's either going to be orange or blue I guess And a lot darker. Okay. So Let's see. These rocks in the back, even though they look black, they're they've got a little bit of this foggy action on them, so I'm trying to keep them uh, a little bit lighter. I should probably do this in order from back to front. I'm being a little bit stupid here. Um, Try to make this smaller too, so I can more easily see what the colors are supposed to be. I wonder if blurring would help smudge out all the colors. Well, actually, the blur definitely works up for the fog. We were listening to the radio yesterday and I heard the host say telescoping the narrative like they're like all right well that's nice let's let's telescope the narrative a bit now and uh, talk about so and so I was like wow that is a that's quite a it's quite a phrase to telescope your narrative I'm going to telescope your face. I, you know, I guess maybe the radio people, they, they probably get bored. 
talking about the same stuff all the time so they gotta make up words and stuff and they gotta you know like another one is um, I heard a pastor saying like oh if you're uh, you know if you ever if there's ever a woman that moves into my eye view that doesn't make me a sinner it's just she's in my eye view and I can't I'm like what eye view is that a word and then also what's the other one mouth feel is another one of these I'm I'm, I'm uh, I have an instant cringe reaction to all of these but they also just kind of fascinate me say I view okay one minute you guys know any like made up radio phrases like that that just make you cringe I, I want to collect all of them and put them in a book or something. Let's unpack this. Let's unpack this na narrative. I'm going to telescope out and and let's let's look at it from a bird a, a bird's eye view. So bad at the time. My time sense. I have a bad time sense. But my eye my eye view is good. Or sorry, eyesight. What would you call memory in that case? It would be like, instead of saying memory, you would say my recall sense. My, um, my past view. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay, do, 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 do. I don't think I made that too dark. In the beginning, or something like that. Actually, this blur's kind of nice. It looks like uh, watercolory, uh, sort of. Uh, I just turn it off. You turn off the radio? What do you turn off? Some people think if they use weird phrases, they sound smart. I mean... Yeah, I think so. I think that's true. But it's it's kind of fun. It's like it's funny to come up with those things and slip them in to regular conversation. It's like a stupid game. They must be bored. Um will you consider time lapse ex export? I would love to have time la lapse export, but I I can't, I don't know how to do that. Um, again, I think that's an engine issue. They don't have a video export yet. But uh, you guys can always jump on GitHub and, and like do a request for go.engine. So go on GitHub, do a search, 
see if the engine has a, a time lapse export and then if they don't then uh, make a request but you should do a thorough search first because they'll get pissed off if you um, if you ask for something that's already been asked because they have like thousands of requests they got a lot of work to do you know so just make it easy on them you know I'm really liking this blur thing it's kind of relaxing Try to bring in these uh, little slices. It's more blue. A little bit darker. And then there's like these little black uh, black slices everywhere too. Or not black, but they, they look to me like brownish. Maybe it's seaweed or something. You know what I should have done is put this yellow, this bright yellow, oh shit. This bright yellow highlight that's reflecting down into the floor. I, I really should have put that in. Uh, I wonder if it's too late to try it because that really makes the water look a lot more realistic I think if you have the blurry man the blur even kind of darkens it up sort of like how it's supposed to be darkened it's nice I'm just gonna do the water over again because it wasn't that much work anyway Okay, yeah, that definitely looks a lot more um, it, it, we've we've telescoped out of the painting and now we've got a better eye view on things. Yeah, this water has a much better mouthfeel right now.
Okay, let's put in the little kayaks. Okay, everything's behaving so far. This might be ready to publish today. that so blurring sort of automatically gives us the the shadow there and a little bit of a reflection that's kind of cool what if I make the blur like super high no <gasps> oh that kind of gives a little bit reflection because a blur is taking the blur is basically taking the color from all around the this area so it, it grabs the yellow from around where the selection is oh yeah okay cool Sorry. Okay, we need to help it out with the with the pa paddles a little bit. Oops. Maybe that's more of a smudge than a blur. Let's try. Yep. I think so. Smudge.
Okay. Just push a little bit more. Okay, I think I should uh, wrap this one up. Let me show the camera what this looks like. Okay guys, thanks for joining in again. Um, I think I think that's it. Let's see, Nicholas says some people translate from their main language. Time lap export would be awesome. Possibility of having gallery view. Gallery view. Yeah, someday. Someday we'll have gallery view. I have some ideas how to do it. Um, bo 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 bo. Some people translate from main language. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm talking about people that are professional, you know, talk, professional speakers. Sometimes they, and, the, and they're speaking in their, their first language and then they make up, or they have like these, I don't know. There's these special phrases that they use that that normal people don't use, but it's it's kind of interesting. Um, okay, guys, thanks for joining in again. I'm gonna try to uh, test a little bit more today, and if everything goes well, I'll I'll publish. But if you want to try out this stuff, it's it's on the uh, uh, website. So heavypoly.com/heavypaint. The, uh, this version is up for desktop right now, so if you you know if you want to play around with it, it's there. And don't forget to dislike and unsubscribe. And delete this channel from YouTube. I'll see you guys next.